Good day, Grade Tens. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the formation of covalent bonding. Covalent bonding. Covalent bonding occurs between non-metals, and I've listed the non-metals here for you. And remember, they're found on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Now, all of the non-metals almost have full outer shells, so they only need one, two, three, or four electrons to complete their outside shells. And what these atoms do when they get together is they share electrons to get those complete outside shells. So here we have chlorine, which has got 17 protons and 17 electrons, and another chlorine atom, which has got 17 protons and 17 electrons. Now both of them have got seven valence electrons. So what happens when they meet up with one another? They share these two electrons here to form a structure like this. So each of these now is now sharing one electron from the other chlorine atom to give both of these a full outer shell. So eight electrons in their outside shell. So if we have a look at hydrogen here, two hydrogen atoms, each with one electron in its outside shell, will pair up and share those electrons so that they've both got two and a full outside shell. Now remember, that electron moves around very, very, very rapidly. So instead of living in this shell or this orbital here, it actually forms an electron cloud. So this is a cloud of negative charge. So what actually you'll see when two hydrogens covalently bond together is that the electrons will spend the majority of their time in between the two positive nucleuses of the hydrogens. So you get this electron cloud in the middle and this forms the electrostatic attraction. So you get the positive proton nucleus with the cloud of electrons in the middle with the other positive proton nucleus. So you get this electrostatic attraction occurring. So each atom shares one valence electron and this will form a single covalent bond when this happens. And hydrogen is an example of this. So you'll see here they're both forming, um, sharing these electrons and this is the electrostatic attraction that I was talking about between the nucleus, which is positively charged, and the cloud of electrons in between, which is negatively charged. And this is what holds these two atoms together. So here we have one pair of shared electrons, and this forms a single covalent bond. So one pair of electrons is a single covalent bond. Double covalent bonds share two valence electrons from each atom. So if we have a look at oxygen, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its valence shell. So it will share two of another atom's electrons, and in this case it's another oxygen atom. So two pairs of shared electrons make it a double covalent bond. And this is just showing you again here with the electron clouds and you can see that there's two pairs of electrons there and that's the double covalent bond. Take notice when you've got the single covalent bonds versus the double covalent bonds. Here you have a greater negative charge in the middle which will cause stronger electrostatic attraction with the corresponding nucleuses. So this means in a double covalent bonded molecule, the atoms are closer together than in a single um, in a single covalent bonded molecule. And a triple covalent bond, each one shares three valence electrons. So an example here is nitrogen, which has got one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. So it needs to share another three electrons with another atom. In this case, it will share it with itself. So it's sharing three pairs of electrons, which form a triple covalent bond. Now to work out the number of covalent bonds an atom is going to form, we can look at its position on the periodic table. So here we have hydrogen which is in group 1, and group 1 means it has got one valence electron to get a full outer shell, it only needs one more valence electron, so it will form one covalent bond. 
carbon has got four in its outside shell, so it needs to form four more covalent bonds. Nitrogen and phosphorus are in group five, so they've got five in their outside shell, so they'll need to form three covalent bonds. Oxygen, sulfur and selenium are in group six, so they need two more electrons, so they will share two electrons with another atom. And the group seven atoms here have got seven in their outside shell, so they only need to form one covalent bond with another atom. And remember, of course, the noble gases are unreactive. So have a go at question one. Question one here talks about the atom symbol, which is carbon, and the number of valence electrons. And we find that just by looking at the periodic table. So carbon's in group four, it's got four valence electrons. Therefore, it needs four more electrons to fill its outside shell, so it will form four covalent bonds. Nitrogen has got five valence electrons, so it needs three more to fill its outside shell, so it will form three covalent bonds. You should be able to fill out the rest of these. Right, grade 10. So now what have we learned? We've learned that covalent bonds is the sharing of valence electrons. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.